Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee Shop Philosophy. As always, I'm your host, Killian Hobbs, the managing editor for think-liberty.com and the news editor for the Being Libertarian family of publications. As always, you can listen to our podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. You can go to our websites and uh, hit the little subscribe bell for the daily updates on all the articles that come out on either beinglibertarian.com, think-liberty.com, or rationalstandard.com. And you can also follow us on all forms of social media feed, including myself personally on Facebook through Killian Hobbs dash author. Uh, so I'm going to skip the rest of everything, get right into it today. And I wanted to start this episode off with a big old fuck you. So what I mean by that is we're actually going to be discussing offensive comedy. So I actually have a guest on today. Uh, he goes by the moniker of Based Beaner. To give you an idea where this episode's going, so hello everyone, how you doing, Killian? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, just like last week, I had the same technical problems with the audio, so I was really glad we were able to, you know, keep you waiting long enough to actually get this going. <laughs> oh, I cleared my schedule, so you're good, man. All right, that's good. That's good. Uh, we were actually just before we started this call. Or this podcast, I should say. It's a call format we use to record it. At, I'm not explaining the technical details. I'll just move on. Um, before we hopped into it, we were actually trying to come up with different offensive names for Canadians. And outside of things that involve words that I just cannot say on this podcast for various reasons, uh, there really was not much more than like Canuck or something like that. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, the reason I got you on here today is I want to go through offensive comedy. So not specifically just offensive jokes or things like that. Like it's not going to be just a half hour of us telling a whole bunch of just terrible jokes over and over again. That's not the idea. There'll probably be a few dropped here and there. So well, deal with it. But what we're going to discuss is political correctness in comedy. And the kind of effect that it has on the way that we view comedy, the type of comedy that's considered, quote unquote, permissive, and just kind of go through like some examples or different things that we've seen when it comes to the evolution of comedy with the PC crowd constantly moving on this and kind of just taking our approach from there. So, yeah, we're going to go through some key stories and situations like that as the episode progresses. And we're just going to kind of hear the base beaners thoughts when it comes to offensive comedy and things like that and go through a couple of details of these things. So uh, I guess one that I wanted to touch on first when we talk about political correctness and comedy is one of the more famous stories in recent times, which was uh, did you follow the uh, the Dankula story? Yes, I do, actually. I'm a really big fan of the guy. Yeah, so what was your take on all that? Like, he posts that, like, I think it was, like, a total of 20 seconds of just his dog apparently being a Nazi, and he's still going to court over this. Like, there's still court dates that are progressing and everything else, and it's all because he did, like, some 20-second video about a Nazi pug, apparently. <laughs> like, that was enough to break his life. Like, I don't... I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get the level of outrage over what realistically is a pretty innocent joke. Well, the weird part is that even when he stated that this video... I'm sorry, excuse me. But, um... He was saying, oh, my girlfriend's always talking about, oh, our dog's so cute. So he's all like, well, what's the least cute thing I can think of? A Nazi. So he thought, oh, I'll train my dog to fucking act like a Nazi and it'll be funny. So in reality, it's a joke on Nazis saying that, oh, that's not cute. That's not something that should be applauded. But yet here's a fucking dog saying, saluting to Zeke Heil. <laughs> yeah, which like I think is comedy gold, by the way. Yeah, like, the offense part aside, like, training your dog to do that just to, A, spite your girlfriend, and B, to just piss people off in general because you think it's funny. Like, that's, I'm sorry, like, even if you, like, even if you find offense with that type of humor, like, you can find, I can understand finding that type of humor offensive. I understand that. 
But at the same time, you have to understand the quality of a joke like that on the humor level. It's like, I, I remember I was going through one of his other videos and like the Nazi pug thing was nothing compared to his, uh, oh, was it countries of the world video? Have you seen that? Oh, one? yes. Oh, my I love God. it. Yeah. Yeah. You watch that one and you're like, okay, people had a problem with the dog. People, people had a problem with the dog. And, and this is the one that we're going with. Okay. Okay. Like it just, it cracks me up to think about where we were like even, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years ago when it came to certain things in comedy. And then we look at where we're at now and the kind of, I guess you could say almost fight over what is and is not acceptable. And it's just, it always seems like you can't win. I mean, I understand like it's difficult to try to root for the guy that's turning his dog into a Nazi. Like it's, it feels really weird rooting for the Nazi dog. But yet fact, here we are. The fact that that's a sentence, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but fuck this decade. The fact that I support the Nazi pug is a sentence that needs to be said. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, fucking. Anyway, whenever I talk about this stuff, it just gets me absolutely bothered because it's all so stupid. Like, do you remember that, uh, the viral tweet from, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Tyler, the creator, where he talks about cyberbullying. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's like, what do you mean this is a thing? Just turn off the screen. Just move on. Just carry on with your lives. And that's all you need to do with like a video like the Nazi pug or uh, if you remember the red panel comics or nowadays stone toss comics, which I think is red panels, but done right. Like yeah. you look at that kind of humor. And it's just if you don't like it, move on. <laughs> Yeah. Also, fun fact. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Dankula was actually convicted of gross offense. Wait, whoa, whoa. The conviction went through? Yep. Oh, shit. I thought he was still fighting that in court. Uh, at this point, they're going through appeals, and I think the first appeal got denied. Ooh. I think uh, at the time of this recording, we, we usually record on like a Monday. Uh, I think I saw a tweet from him earlier where he was saying that he was going into court in what would be our tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, tomorrow I think he's going into court for the next part of his, I guess it's appeal. I thought he was still fighting the initial conviction. Like I thought it got uh, delayed or pushed along. I really got to yeah, no. this stuff better. They give him uh, an episode. <laughs> Uh, but they gave him a a fine. That's the word. But uh, they gave him a fine of eight hundred pounds, and he said, "I refuse to pay this because I have done no wrong," which is fair. Yeah, exactly. It's not his fault. The dog's a Nazi. You exactly. The dog, the dog was the one going to the island shit. <laughs> For all we know, Count Dankula was a prisoner of that dog. <laughs> and we need help for him. We need to free him from the Nazi pug. Um, this is going to be a great episode. I can already like smell it in the air. The just stream of shit posting this episode is going to turn into. It's going to be amazing. Oh fuck! But yeah, no, thank like, you for being proud of my what my parents are ashamed of. <laughs> oh fuck! This is going to be a brutal episode. This is great uh, for everyone that listens to this and usually goes you know, I like your calm and soft approach and the way that you balance things out and go into it. We're going to just completely ruin that image in this episode. I'm sure the shreds of respect that I have built up over the last 20 plus episodes of this, it's, it's, it's going to be gone by the end of the episode. I can, I can feel it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be the first reputation I've ruined? <laughs> Oh fuck. Uh so yeah, no, like the Count Dacula one uh Dacula? Wow. <laughs> he in English. The Count Dankula one, uh, I think was a prime example of the kind of just outrage culture that pops up when ever one of these little moments happen. And I, I find that like you can see in comedy that a lot of things are transitional. And what I mean by that is that a lot of things in the realm of comedy 
are designed to press buttons. You're not going to get that laugh out unless it hits something that you weren't ready for, or unless it blindsides you in some way. Like if the end of the sentence is completely predictable or the direction that things are going is completely predictable, then unless there's either some level of awkwardness to it or some level of shock to it or some level of irony to it or just something that puts it outside of the norm, then it's not going to be funny. It just, it's not funny if you're doing anything that's completely inside just normal everyday events because there's just no, there's no haha to that. So when we take this, not even, I don't even want to call it political correctness. I just want to call it outrage culture. When we take this outrage culture approach to comedy and we try to shut down anything that we disagree with, then all we're doing is literally killing comedy. I agree. 100%. Yeah. Like, uh, what was the, there was a, another tweet anyway. I, I, I keep quoting tweets. I don't tweet anything you usually see on my Twitter. If you ever go and for some God awful reason, look me up on Twitter. Uh, it's all just kind of reposts that are set up to come off of my like personal Facebook. So most of it is just links to articles and random memes and shit that there's nothing special there. But when I was on there, my like, there Twitter's nothing... just making fun of Chris Chan, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Twitter is, Twitter's its own special little creature. Hell. Yeah. Hell. That's a, a way more accurate way to put it. I don't know who said this, but I know this quote belongs to someone else, so no one pinned this on me. If you're not offending someone, you're not doing comedy right. Yeah, no, that's... And I, I think you just summarized the entire episode and we're only like 10 minutes in. <laughs> oh, well, good talk, Killian. Uh, uh, I'm going to get drunk. <laughs> Short and sweet. Let's move on. It was great having you on. Uh, we're going to wrap the episode. Okay, now. Um, <laughs> the shortest guest of all time. Um, but no, like in more ways than one. You see, <laughs> the worst part is I don't know if you're referencing your height and I'm worried you're not referencing your height. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm tall for a Mexican. <laughs> so the wall only has to be like 25 feet, not a full 30. <laughs> Fuck. trampolines baby trampolines and that is the point where we just lost the like eight latino listeners that i think i might have had i think we just lost you guys and uh we're sorry about that um, hopefully you will come back for the next episode <laughs> but uh the tweet i was trying to remember it was uh ricky gervais um and he put out a thing explaining how offensive comedy should work. He said, you know, people always say you can't joke about things anymore. You can't joke about things anymore. And he said, you know, that's a crock of shit. You can joke about whatever you want. And then people will tell you whether they like it or if they don't. And then if you're the one telling the joke, it's on you to decide how much of a fuck you give about the people who don't like your comedy. And I think, I think the world of comedy needs a lot more of that. I agree. We need people to stop being going like, oh, I'm walking on eggshells. Don't want to offend anyone. It's like, get the hell out of comedy. You don't belong here. This is not for you. Yeah, like comedy, again, by default, it has to not necessarily shock in the sense of being completely over the top, but it has to have a certain sense of catching you offside. There has to be something that's going to make people feel somewhat uncomfortable like there's got to be something that's said out loud that even if someone already agrees with it the just shock of hearing it said out loud does it or hearing about events playing out in a strange way like those are elements of that are that are a key part of storytelling and joke telling and you're going to offend people when you bring up things that are outside of their norms. Someone is going to walk away from it and say that wasn't funny, or they're going to say that was offensive, or that pissed me off. Again, it, it's just, it's a matter of how much do you want to care about the audience that doesn't like your sense of humor, especially if, especially if your brand is built by the people that do like your humor. 
it's, it's like, um, this is a little offside, but it's like the, the saying, go woke, go broke. And you see that. Yeah, in, I've heard uh, that many a time. Yeah. You see that with like, um, the Gillette commercial or all the backlash over, uh, Nike with Kaepernick or even just in the video game industry where like all of these diversity elements have to be involved. And please, please don't be offensive. It's not woman. It's Womixin. Oh God, don't even get me started on the whole pronoun repronunciation thing. Like, Uh, you know what? If like my sense is this, if you want to, you know, if you want to identify as something or you prefer to be referred to in a certain way, okay. You know, that's, you know, you're that you are your own person. And by extension, you are free to set those kind of rules for yourself of what do you, what you find acceptable and what you find unacceptable for how people, you know, are going to treat you and interact with you and all that sort of stuff. As soon as you start trying to legislate it, that's when you need to calm the fuck down. And the other part that I don't get with it as well is, uh, it's like, um, it's like the comedian Dave Chappelle said, going back to offensive comedians. Uh, it's like Dave Chappelle said with, um, the whole thing of, you can be in whoever you want to be, but how involved in your identity do I need to be? And it's just, the answer should be not at all. Like you shouldn't need that kind of, you shouldn't need that kind of like external validation in order to make the rules that you set for yourself as to how people are going to interact with you valid. Like they should be valid because you set those rules in and of themselves. Same thing with comedy. If you set a rule for, you know, there's certain things that I just don't find funny. Like, let's say, um, even though I think I'm, I think they're hilarious and I'm going to go to hell for them. Uh, Helen Keller jokes. Some people, (laughs) yeah. Some people might set the like line in the sand that no, I'm not going to pick on Helen Keller. That's too mean. Personally, I die laughing every time I hear a Helen Keller joke kills me every time. And I know, I mean, let's be honest. Do you think she would notice if we told jokes about her? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, it's like my favorite, my favorite Helen Keller joke is, uh, why did Helen Keller's dog run away? Oh, why? You'd run away too if your name was. I'll do you one better. Oh, oh God. How do Helen Keller's parents punish her? How? They just put the plunger in the toilet. Ooh. <laughs> the worst fuck. The worst part about that joke is I can fucking visualize it too. <laughs> You've spent too much time on the internet, much like me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. Sometimes I hate 4chan. Oh god. The the levels of things that I have learned that people at the various stages of life that I was in shouldn't need to learn. I learned from there. It is a blessing and a curse. (laughs) Oh, fuck. You're not wrong. It's, um, going back to the, the comedy side though, right? Like uh, Helen Keller joke sort of thing. Same like the, the personal identity stuff that we touched on there for a second, but going back to the comedy standards, you can choose what lines in the sand you want to draw on on things that, you know, you either find offensive or you find funny or things that you're not going to laugh at or you find distasteful, whatever else have you. And that's perfectly fine. Like, by all means, I encourage people to be able to set their own standards as to what they find acceptable or not acceptable. But in the same sense, that needs to start and stop with you. If I found a joke offensive and honestly, I, I probably haven't ever come across a joke that I was like, okay, that's, that's just, that's just too offensive. We can't do that one here. I don't really find any type of jokes offensive, but even if I did the line for what is and is not offensive needs to start and stop with me just because I dislike something doesn't mean that I should have the ability to prevent someone else from enjoying it. I might completely dislike the existence of Cardi B, but if people really want to go out there and hand her money to listen to that thing that she calls music, 
because I, I refuse to sully the word music by associating it to her. But if they if they want to go put their money out there to listen to her quote unquote music, then okay, you you go right ahead and do that sport. That's entirely on you. I'm not going to get involved because that's not my place. Yeah, I agree. I, I, Cardi B is trash. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, I don't think you're... you're neither one of us are going to argue over how bad Cardi B is. Like, I just... I see something like that and I'm like, how are you getting money? Like, why are people handing money to you to do the things you do? The slutty rapper shtick has been so overdone. There was... Uh, I'm just going to name three of the biggest ones, you know, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj. And honestly, it all really started with uh, Lil' Kim. You see, I go, yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. Like, that's when the, that's kind of when, like, the, the sexualization aspect of it really became more of the selling point than the actual musical skills that were involved for some artists anyway. There's obviously been some brilliant female artists in the rap genre that have come out along the time, but... There's definitely some of those that just cling to that aspect of marketing, of course. But it sells. It it works. I'm not going to fault them for that, but it's beyond me to even grasp. No one said the free market was without flaws. <laughs> the beauty of the free market is that everyone can go and choose what they want. The drawback is that some people's choices suck. But... Just like with comedy and what isn't isn't offensive, then, you know, that's where we have to say, okay, to each their own. Now, to flip it, to flip the script a little bit, right? Because we're talking about, you know, completely staying away and avoiding, like, the Nicki Minaj's of the world when it comes to that sort of stuff. When we talk about offensive comedy, like I've said earlier, I'm completely on board with people stepping away from people that they consider to be offensive comedians. And if the quote unquote offensive comedians decide to self censor because they want to get that audience back, that is entirely their choice. I'm a hundred percent on board with that because I do think even though, even though they don't always work to the best degree, I do think that boycotts and the like work. And I think that literally putting your money where your mouth is, that's a great example of the free market in play. And it's the type of principles that anyone who's libertarian should be, you know, they should be celebrating when people act in that vein of principles. But when I, when I see the, the outrage over some of the offensive jokes and stuff like that, it's okay. You're telling people you find it offensive, everything else. But in the same sense, the amount of comedians, the amount of companies, the amount of uh, just groups entirely that bend at the smallest amount of outrage. I mean, I remember when the like the consideration was any news is good news because it put your name out there. It meant that you were known. It meant that people were talking about you. Even in nowadays where, you know, we've normalized just about everything when it comes to like use of swear words and comedy, like that's, that's something you can listen to on primetime TV now, whereas before you had to wait until after 11 to hear a person on television say fuck. But now, even in today's climate with the like stuff that people go on about, and I mean, hell, 2018, the entire joke of 2018 or theme, if you will, was people eating ass. Like that was just like, you would just <laughs> see that on your news feed and that was just normal. It's like, Hey, what are you doing today? Eating the booty like groceries. And that was just like the thing you would see every fucking day. And <laughs> that's the, you know, how, how do I it's work? It's a way this? of life. Yeah, apparently it used to be ball is life. Now it's booty is life. But yeah. you would listen to that and you go, okay, this is just completely normal somehow. But then you try to show people nowadays the old dirty comedy that say Bill Cosby and people would lose their absolute shit despite the fact that we've normalized all the other stuff. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, say two years ago, I had this joke where, you know, I bring home a girl, turns out to be a guy, and the punchline of the joke is at the end of the day, I'm still the smaller man. Do with that as you will. But I do know, given today's uh, current climate, I know I could never tell that joke in a club. 
does it say I'm transphobic or whatnot? Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like, sometimes a joke is just a joke, and it involves playing off of things that exist. Like, so, like, in order to tell a joke, you have to use the things that exist. As I've said, like, three or four times now, you need either that little bit of shock or that little bit of, I don't want to say, like, <sighs> eeriness, but there's something that's got to be off to kind of hit people in from the blind side and just kind of hit them a little bit like that to say, okay, here's your punchline. Bam. Like, that's why it's a punchline. Like it's got to hit. You blindside them pretty much. Yeah. Like they, they need to not expect the outcome. If they expect the outcome, then it's just going to completely ruin the joke. It's like, if you tell a knock, knock joke and you already know the punchline to the joke, it gets less and less funny. The more often you hear it, it kills. Well, it's the ATF and they shoot your dog. Yeah. (laughs) And you see, that's a blind side. Like, we're not ready for it. I don't think the dog was either. No, I I miss Sparky. The worst part is when you get, like, the the guy from the ATF and he decides to nickname himself Chocolate because he's killed his fifth dog. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. It was menacing me. Yet. Chihuahuas menace everybody. Calm the fuck down, sport. Speaking of that, like overreacting, um, it reminds me of the uh, Charlie Hebdo incident. I don't know who remembers it, but it uh, wasn't technically the Charlie Hebdo incident so much as it was the uh, Jillian's Poston controversy that led to it all. Uh, I'll give a little bit of background on it, but I think that this is a good example of the dangers of of people getting this worked up about things. And again, like I said, um, I understand people potentially being upset about something and it going as far as them not participating in content. Like I get that side of things, but I'll go through the story and, uh, you know, you can tell me if you, uh, what you know about it or anything like that, or if you have any thoughts that you want to add to things here. Um, so a good example, Jillian's post in uh, cartoon controversy here. So that started in 2005. So in 2005, a Danish newspaper uh, called the uh, Jillens Post, and I apologize to the Danish audience if I have one. I, I don't think that I do, but I'm Canadian, so I'll apologize anyway. Um, I'm American. I don't apologize. Well, that's just a fact there. That's not even a joke. I thought you were going to say something funny. <laughs> we still haven't apologized for the nuke, so I don't think we'll ever apologize for anything. Yeah, really. Uh, anyway, the uh, Jillian's post in uh, controversy. Uh, so it started off with uh, 12 editorial cartoons uh, that came out again uh, September 2005, uh, most of which uh, were regarding Muhammad, um, the prophet from Islam. The newspaper put this out to contribute to the debate regarding uh, public critique of Islam, as well as just censorship, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through every single step of the story because the thing was wild from start to finish. Um, But it led to court cases. It led to actual riots in Middle Eastern countries. It led to riots in Europe. It culminated, however, in what's better known as the Charlie Hebdo incident. Uh, So for those that don't know, what happened was there was a shooting for the French satirical weekly newspaper, Charlie Hebdo. Um, Some of their staff were shot. Uh, They had to go through a whole court process because they were taken to court over publishing satirical cartoons of Muhammad. And uh, in November I think it was 2011 was the year. I want to say, I know it was November, but I think it was 2010 or 2011. They got firebombed. They they actually were completely attacked over these cartoons. Now, I understand in the Islamic faith that uh, depicting Muhammad in any manner, especially in a negative light, is something that is considered blasphemous and something that is considered, you know, a one of the higher sins, sort of like um, sort of like how Christians used to react to people taking the Lord's name in vain. But when it comes to the uh, 
when it comes to this, I mean, they, they firebombed a fucking building over a cartoon and that's what it boils down to. Like, I don't understand the amount of just violence over a set of cartoons. I understand being offended. I understand that it took a shot at a central figure to their faith, but it turning into that level of violence is something that should offend everybody in a actual like cultural outrage sense. Like people should be mad that other human beings behave this way over something this minor. What really got me though was the court cases. Uh, they went to court over this for inciting hatred. That was oh, the for fuck's sake. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing. They ended up having to go to court over inciting hatred because people were afraid that these satirical cartoons from a satirical publication. So it wasn't even like a normal news publication that just so happened to put out something that was disparaging. Them. No, 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 no. It'd be like if the onion put out an article or Babylon B or Devil Bag or eight satire or any of those satire specific sites we all know and love. It would be like one of them put out a cartoon of say, let's say Jesus. And then every evangelical hunted down their headquarters and burned the place to the ground because it pissed them off. Well, on that note, I mean, family guy itself has made plenty of jokes on Jesus, made him even a narcissistic asshole. And I have yet to hear about any Fox studios getting firebombed. And I hate to, you know, white knight Christianity. Cause I mean, it, it has its own issues on its own, but that's a different story. And sure, they protest about it, but it hasn't escalated to the point of violence. Yeah, like the like Christianity definitely had its violence past, but keyword is past. Going back to it here, they attacked the building, it was firebombed, their staff were shot and killed over a series of cartoons because of the offense that it caused. So, I mean, this isn't even just your general, you know, people being outraged and then the place self-censoring and accommodating to their audience because they pissed their audience off. No, this was people got so pissed that it got to the point where they incited all this level of violence against them. While ironically, they were in court for inciting hatred against the people that ended up firebombing them. Okay, but can we can we be honest and say that inciting hatred, what it really is, is thought crime? Can we be intellectually honest here, Killian? Oh, you see, I agree with that 100%. Like, there's some instances where I can understand wanting to have a specific side crime, if you will, for something. Like, if someone's standing there, and they've got a gun, and there's a person standing behind them, doing everything in their power to encourage that person to start shooting people, then, yeah, the person that's doing the encouragement, even though they are just saying words... They're still putting all their efforts into making an action happen. In that sense, I understand it a little. If people are feeling like genuine hatred, if people are quote unquote inciting hatred because a satire magazine put out a fucking cartoon, that's when everybody needs to just stop what they're doing for like 10 seconds and give their fucking head a shake. Mm -hmm. uh, just drives me up the wall. Uh, anyway, I think we've, uh, I think I've kept you on here long enough. Um, did you have anything you wanted to plug or anything you wanted to say before we start wrapping up here? All right. Follow the cancer at it's space beaner, you know, at Twitter. Um, for the love of God, stay away from my YouTube channel. It is terrible, but I'm not your boss now. Am I? I think they're going to need to know the name of the YouTube channel. So they know. Oh, to stay yeah. Away from it. Yeah. No, it, it's, yeah, no, it's based beaner act. That's uh, what to avoid, hint to the hint hint. But uh, have fun, everyone. Anyway, it was a pleasure having you on. Uh, we did bounce around a little bit there, a little ADD kind of moments here and there. But uh, I think it was I think it was good stuff overall. Um, as always, 
Uh, you can follow us on the social media feeds. Uh, you can listen to podcasts from us uh, wherever you do get your podcasts. Uh, you can follow us also on uh, YouTube, everywhere else. Uh, again, you can follow myself directly on Facebook for Killian Hobbs Author. And as always, if you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, I'll see you again next week. 